and welcome to the online open hour for the senior college at for the senior school at Somerset College. I'm Patricia Macnor Davis, admissions liaison at the school, and we're coming to you live from Somerset West in the beautiful Western Cape. Thank you for making time to join us this afternoon. We really miss not being able to see you in person and particularly not to be able to meet your teenager today. But we've got an exciting program lined up for you, and I hope it will inspire you to come and visit us for soon, and we'll see you for real. Some of you today are watching from various parts of South Africa. Hi, especially to you in Gauteng and KZN. And also we have guests from across the world. So it's a warm welcome to you in Dubai, Kenya, Botswana, Mauritius, Namibia, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Switzerland, and Germany today. We have a team of people for you to meet this afternoon, staff and students, but you are actually the VIP today, and we welcome your participation this afternoon. So please feel free to, if you have any questions, to type them in and to ask them during the presentations. We have staff who might be able to answer you immediately, but otherwise, a, a stay for our question and answer session at the end when a panel of key staff members will respond to those questions. Let's start at the top and meet the executive head of Somerset College and head of the senior school, Graham Sayer, for an interview of who we are and how we think and what we do at Somerset College. Then we'll give you a quick visual tour of the senior school before inviting three significant guests, they are our students, to tell you about their experience of being in grade eight and grade 12 at Somerset College. You'll be able to meet our deputy head in charge of academics and our senior deputy head, who's also the director of our Cambridge program, and they're going to be able to give you a good introduction to our academic offering at Somerset College. So let me introduce you to Graham Sayer. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us online. Um, it's going to be an overview rather than an interview. Um, it's my privilege to lead this wonderful school, which is situated, I think, on one of the most beautiful campuses in the land, if not in the world. It's teeming with possibility. We've got 1,159 students on campus, all the way from Triple Nought to Grade 12 and Cambridge AL. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the school so that you can help, so that I can help you make up your minds about whether to join us in 2024 if you're uh, part of the grade eight group that are watching this afternoon or next year if your child is in any other grade. So I think a, a simple point to make is that we're 25 years old this year. And um, it's a special moment for us. We get to look back on the enormous amount of growth that we've been blessed enough to experience in this short period of time. Um, and we've been through some really challenging chapters and come out stronger than ever before with demand for places at the school growing um, and approaching an all-time high for next year. One of the wonderful things about being 25 years old as a school is that there are very few sacred cows on campus. In speaking to some people at older schools, they say things like, well, sometimes there's so many sacred cows on campus, one can barely cut the lawn. But that's not the case for us. We've got lots of agility and creativity as a result of that. We're not encumbered by tradition. It does bring challenges being a young school. We don't have huge endowments and very wealthy alumni queuing up to throw money at the school. But that's good for us, we think, because it helps us to model the best possible use of resources. We have to be lean and mean and efficient, not mean, lean and efficient with uh, all of the resources at our disposal so that we can make sure that this is a sustainable school which serves its community and serves its people well. Another really important thing about this school is that we are a values-driven organization. I think a lot of people talk about that. Um, I think a lovely way to think about values is that they're kind of 
the, the source of the stream of the school. They're kind of the, the spring that gives life to the school. And one can't, a stream can't flow much higher than its, or can't flow higher than its source. And, and I think that's true of your values as well. If you don't set yourselves appropriately lofty values, you're probably not going to perform at the level that's going to keep people engaged and believing in the school and believing in its mission. But it's all, once you've established those values, it's all about what you do with them. It's about the role modeling that happens. So let me just take you through those values. The school's founding motto is pietas, and that's a Latin word which roughly translated means piety, but really the way we think about it is submission of oneself to a purpose higher than oneself. Um, and sometimes we've had it spoken about as, being, as doing the right thing. And then the values that underpin that and flow from that are dignity, aspiration, creativity, and contribution. And those certainly weren't chosen at random. Um, they were chosen to tell a story about the school, who we want to be, who we aim to be, um, who we expect to be to each other and to our community and to our country. So starting with dignity is really critical. It's a foundational value. If we don't have a high value for each other and ourselves, then we're heading on the wrong path straight away. And if we do have a high value for ourselves and for each other, then we're going to have to aspire to more for ourselves, for our nation, for the world. And that's why aspiration is our second value. However, aspiration is really just going to be a bunch of hopes unless we can be creative enough to overcome the challenges that impede the achievement of those aspirations. So creativity is the third value. That's about mastery of the curriculum. We know that that sits atop the Bloom's taxonomy, so that's about mastery of the curriculum. But it's also about problem so solving, those 21st century skills that are so well embodied, we believe, in our ESTEEM innovation curriculum, about which you're going to hear more from uh, Claire Searle, the deputy in charge of academics and innovation. And then finally, why are we doing it? This is a not-for-profit school. So it's not dignity, asp aspiration, creativity, profit. It's dignity, aspiration, creativity, contribution. We're doing all of this so that we can make a contribution. We don't want to step on people's heads to get where we need to be. We want people to come along with us, and we want to be valued by our community and by our nation and by the people who work here. So it's all up to how we model that to our kids, because we can talk till we're blue in the face about our values, but if we're not living them out and we're not striving to achieve them, then really the enterprise of education is in jeopardy. So we have to start really at the top there. It's about governance. It's about excellent governance. And we have been blessed to have superb governors who give their time entirely free of charge to bring their expertise from all sectors of industry, or many sector sectors of industry, to ensure that this school can achieve its mission and live out its values. There you have to be meticulous about attention to strategy, about supporting, uh, uh, supporting plans, policies, procedures, and protocols, about being attentive to your people, about recruitment, and all of those things are in place at this school. And they've been tested by the winds of change that have bro uh, blown across the educational landscape. We've also got a superb financial team. Without them, and sometimes they're the unsung heroes of the school, we really wouldn't be able to carry out our operations and achieve our goals. And they really have been able to ensure that the school is on an excellent, sustainable footing and path, which enables us to offer value to all of our um, people and to the community at large. What we want to offer our students then, and this is part of what we role model, is a holistic education, an education which um, allows them many options to explore their aptitudes, to challenge themselves, to grow, to understand themselves and their place in the community and their relationships with others better, and to make an informed choice about where they want to put their energy in the future. We don't want to create people who are just cardboard cutouts of a type. We want people to be real individuals who live significant lives, and so we believe it's important to offer that kind of educational experience. And once again, this brings me back to role modeling the best possible use of, uses of the resources available to you. I th really think that's a critical, important, uh, um, a critical um, aspect of excellence. The other, obviously, is international competitiveness. And you're going to hear more from Mr. Tuck and Ms. Searle about how our curriculum support that. Um, but we offer two excellent internationally um, uh, competitive curriculums about which you're here 
later on, as well as a superb outdoor experience. I think we're one of the strongest outdoor schools there in the world and a broad sports offering, as well as cultural opportunities, clubs, societies, and external competition. All of this really also relies on a strong, competent, experienced staff, and that we have at this school. They have been the heroes of a very, very difficult period in the country's history, and they are the people who've enabled us to sustain what we're doing and to grow our reputation in the process. Markers that we're doing this, I think, let me just m mention two in, in ending off, is that in our 25th year, we said we're not going to go for a huge fundraising drive. We're going to celebrate with modesty and deep gratitude for the unstinting contributions of our parents and alumni and students and staff over the years that have enabled all of the things we've achieved. But what happened during the course of the year was that several donors came forward and put six million rand on the table towards expansion of facilities on the campus. And I think that's a huge vote of confidence in what we're doing. That indicates that people see what uh, is being provided here they see that it add val adds value to the lives of their children, and they want to be part of ensuring that it's sustainable into the future. And I think another marker of that is that, as I said at the beginning, the demand for places is growing at this school, and we are approaching an all-time high for next year. So in conclusion, I hope that that's given you some insight into the school, a bit of an overview of who we are and who we aim to be, and I hope that you will consider joining us in future and putting in an application. Thank you very much. School at Somerset College, where we follow the Independent Examination Board curriculum, that's the IEB, from grade 8 to grade 12, with the option in the final two years of school of moving into our Cambridge programme so your child can obtain their A levels. While the IEB curriculum is accepted by many universities overseas, the Cambridge programme is viewed as a world class international qualification opening doors to many tertiary institutions across the globe. Our Top in the World Cambridge programme draws students from across the world, making for an interesting cosmopolitan mix at our school. When visitors arrive at Somerset College and they see our incredible surroundings, the vineyards, the sports fields, the beautiful buildings, they often ask me, so where are the classrooms? Well, let me show you. And let's start with the language block. Within the IEB curriculum, Somerset College offers English, Afrikaans, Isikosa, French and German as our language subjects. And the library is the place where the love of language becomes the love of books. Apart from about 7,000 physical books, we also have an online library, which means there's an endless variety of books to choose from. And our library is also a place of quiet study for our Cambridge students and for our international students who are exempt from taking Afrikaans as a subject. This is a classroom with space and style, our lecture theatre. We can seat a whole grade here, so it's ideal for collaborative teaching or if we have a specialist guest speaker to address a specific area of the curriculum. You know about our language choice. Here are the other IEB subjects available at Somerset College. Any resemblance to a university lecture theatre is strictly coincidental. The seats are way more comfortable and there's no graffiti on the desks, but it is a good place for preparing students for their tertiary education. This is our science block and it's home to the subjects of mathematics, 
life sciences, physics, chemistry, computer studies and consumer studies. Come with me, I'd love to show you inside. Both science and art are human attempts to describe and understand the world around us. And so they are not poles apart, they actually start at the same place. And that is by looking at something and seeing it differently. Think about that. This is our life sciences laboratory and I'd love to bring you in here for a real tour because it's a real tour in your memory because this is the place that smells of your high school biology class with Bunsen burners and formalin. It's a great place to be. We're in the consumer studies classroom and unlike the life sciences laboratory which smelled of Bunsen burners and formalin, this classroom smells of vanilla or curry perhaps. Consumer studies is like home economics on steroids. It's so much more than just cooking. It has a very strong entrepreneurial side to it. So it's not just about baking cupcakes, it's about starting a business that makes cupcakes. It's the marketing strategy, the business plan, the design for the packaging, the distribution, buying a vehicle, buying premises. It's incredible stuff and I wish every student could do it. They'd learn how to look after themselves and feed themselves and how to start a business. It's a great preparation for the real world of work. We're in one of our two computer classrooms. Prior to COVID, we were a school that integrated technology into every subject, but we still preferred to use a textbook and notes and interact physically with the learning material. COVID has taught us, of course, that computers are absolutely essential in the classroom and we use them a great deal more than we used to before. But we still believe that in some subjects, particularly like mathematics, it is better to be able to interact physically with the subject matter using writing, making mind maps, making those summaries, working it out for yourself on paper. Our multi-purpose hall is massive. It's so big, you could park an aeroplane here, but you just couldn't get it through the door. We play indoor hockey here in summer and netball in winter, and it's the place for assembly, school plays, drama classes, examinations, matric dances, big celebrations, and for our massive annual Pops Music Concert, which is the cultural highlight of the year. Imagine professional sound and lighting, big screens and smoke machines. It's rock star stuff. St Matthew's Chapel is at the centre of the senior school and is used by the senior and the prep school for weekly interdenominational services, which all students attend. Somerset College has a strong Christian foundation and this remains central to life at the college today. This lovely space is used for a range of activities apart from the weekly services. These include quarterly music concerts and as a teaching space. But it remains a place of stillness, reflection and prayer. Let me show you a beautiful view out of the main stained glass window. Welcome to our ESTEEM Innovation Centre. ESTEEM stands for Entrepreneurship, science, technology, engineering, art and maths. And this building, which recently won an International Architectural Award for its innovation and beautiful simplicity of design, is used by both the prep and the senior school students. It is the most exciting classroom space on the campus, home to 3D printers, laser cutters, drones and robotics. Also to art, very important the integration of art and language into maths and science and engineering. Take a look.
everyone. My name is Sadie Geard and I am the head girl at Somerset College for the year 2023. I have been at Somerset College for as long as I can remember. I've watched the school grow and flourish and I'm truly proud of the place that it is today. Somerset College is a school that prides itself in its values and ethos. It is a community in which every student can find belonging, whether it be in sport, academics, music, culture or committees. When looking back at my Somerset College high school career, two events that really stand out for me have been Pops and Trek. They allowed me to grow and develop new skills, which have been highly positive in impacting my life. Every student at Somerset College is encouraged to be the best version of themselves and is celebrated for their own unique attributes. The beautiful campus, vast opportunities and supportive community create the ideal learning environment where every student can truly feel at home. Thank you. Good day, everyone. My name is Yara Singh, and I am a grade eight student at Somerset College. I moved to the Western Cape from KZN when I was two years old and joined Somerset College in grade double naught when I was four. I think it's safe to say that my primary school journey has flown by uncomfortably quickly. This year, I entered high school, excited to share my love for Somerset College with all the new students, and I was confident that they would enjoy it as much as I have. I am so happy that the jump to high school has been much easier than anticipated. The jump has felt more like a graceful leap. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's more to being a student at Somerset College than the high standard of education, the sporting facilities, the beautiful scenery, and the unique and unforgettable opportunities. I have made lifelong friends here and built strong connections with many of the teachers and coaches. Moving to the Western Cape was hard for me because I have no other family here besides my mom and dad. But through the years, thanks to college, my school friends have become my family and some is a college, my second home. Being at college has made me realize from a young age that family is not just blood relatives. Family are the people in your life that want you in theirs and that love and accept you no matter what. It is easy to make friends at college because we all share the same values of kindness and respect for others. After all, our school motto is pietus, which means duty to one's family and community. Mother Teresa said that if we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. She also said, let no one come to you without leaving better and happier. Although we are all unique, I have always felt like I belonged at college. I am always happy and at peace, and I am always excited to come to school every morning. I know I will leave my school and enter the big world out there much better off for having had the privilege to attend Somerset College. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Nicholas Reith, head boy of 2023. Somerset College has become my second home for the last seven years. I've been fortunate enough to be highly involved in the school community and it is one where everyone feels extremely welcome. I continuously look forward to watching Trek groups leave and to see their nervous and excited faces as they leave all their comfort behind. I enjoy these moments as I know what an enriching journey this experience is and the newfound perspective it gives you once completed. A lot is said about our world-class facilities and education system, but for me, what makes this campus so special are the people on it. The talents and camaraderie that the students and staff have together is on another level. With the endless opportunities our school offers, the areas for growth and development are huge. Somerset College provides so much for any student attending and has the power to enrich each and every one who attends. In the classroom, on the sport grounds, and in culture settings, college inspires students to challenge normality and to push themselves to be the best. Our school is a space full of support and inclusion where students can excel in all facets of life. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Academics at Somerset College is characterized by innovation, by the pursuit of excellence and attentiveness to individual needs. The three pillars of, of our academics are the IEB, the Independent South African Curriculum, the International Cambridge System, and our ESTEEM Innovation Offering. In both the IEB and Cambridge International, our students achieve top results in the country, and in the Cambridge System, top results in the world and in the region. And we really do achieve results which are to be proud of. Students follow the IEB curriculum in grades 8, 9 and 10, 
and choose whether they wanted to follow the Cambridge stream for grades 11 and 12. Plenty of support is offered and counselling takes place prior to having to make this choice and students have plenty of support. This is not something that parents need to decide on, students need to decide on before they join us, unless of course joining in grade 11. Our teachers teach across both certification methods and it is the cross-pollination of the curricula and approaches that we celebrate and of course the fact that our students can choose uh, a curriculum that best suits them and that's what's really to be celebrated about um, offering both the IEB and Cambridge curricula. ESTEAM is our innovation offering and it stands for Entrepreneurship, Science, Technology, Engineering, Art and Maths. Uh, this is a cross-curricular approach emphasizing systems thinking, innovation and creativity and represents a move away from siloed, narrow thinking uh, which can be quite constricting. Uh, it is an active curriculum giving our students voice and choice where learners um, are independent, motivated by their interest in a topic and buoyed by the ideas offered by others and their conversations around real world topics. Critical thinking, problem solving and communication skills are foregrounded and cre creativity is always encouraged and it is communicated to students how important being creative is. That's not, this is not just in terms of art, but in terms of students generating new ideas, being resourceful, and in terms of problem solving. Creativity is not only the bedrock of innovation, but is also one of the strongest predictors of an individual's success later in life. So it is always central to our esteem offering. The reason for integrating esteem into our curriculum really speaks for itself. But it is worth noting that the majority of jobs in the future will be careers involving science, technology, engineering, art and maths, and where entrepreneurship will be extremely important. And that's both entrepreneurship in, in terms of creating jobs, um, but also uh, being entrepreneurial within organizations and being innovative. So we not only want to extend our students, get them thinking in different ways, critically and creatively, and immerse them in ideas and, te and, the, and technologies that matter now, we want them to be able to find meaningful work in the future. And we want them to be able to make a meaningful contribution in society. Dignity, aspiration, creativity, contribution. So how does esteem work? Esteem is offered to every child in every class uh, in the school from grade triple zero to grade 11 um, during the school day. As well, in, as, as we also offer some voluntary esteem clubs such as robotics in the afternoons. Uh, furthermore, our esteem approach and innovative thinking permeates through the traditional curriculum, um, thoroughly incorporating and embedding this type of thinking into our academics. Our pastoral care offering underpins our academic offering, and um, that goes from our teachers in every classroom who are caring and attentive to the needs of students academically and emotionally, uh, to our tutor mentoring system, where every 10 or 12 students have a tutor teacher allocated to them with whom they meet weekly, um, and then to two grade heads per grade, usually a male uh, grade head and a female grade head that attend to the pastoral care needs of the grade, um, and then to our student development unit, counsellors, uh, ed educational psychologist uh, support, um, and that unit uh, really supports our students emotionally and also assists with subject choices and that sort of support. So in closing, it is the choice between Cambridge International and the IEB curriculum uh, and the exposure of every student to esteem and to our innovative um, esteem curriculum and our pursuit of excellence in these areas uh, as well as our care for and our attentiveness to students' individual needs uh, that really sets us apart. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Gareth Tucker. I'm the Senior Deputy Head here at Somerset College in the Senior School and I am responsible for academic planning, but I am also the director of the Cambridge program, and that is what I'm going to speak to you about today. We offer the Cambridge International AS and A-level qualifications, and these are accepted in South African universities, 
and internationally by over 2,200 universities in countries such as the UK, the USA, Germany, Netherlands, Australia, just to mention some of the major student destinations. Our AS and A-level programs run parallel to our IEB grade 11 and 12 program. And that means that students with a South African grade 10 or with the GCSE or IGCSE or a similar or equivalent qualification can apply generally around the age 16 for our program, for the Somerset College Cambridge program. The, our program here at Somerset College has increased in popularity since we first started with six students in 2015. Nine, 2022, we have 64 students. Our proven track record with many first in world and first in country awards over a range of subjects such as mathematics, English, computer science, just to name a few, have added to this increase in popularity. Also, as we have a boarding house, the program has attracted many international students, which makes the program really, really interesting, as we have so many students with so many different backgrounds joining us. Countries such as England, Germany, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Singapore, China, Bermuda, and Mauritius, just to name a few of students that have joined us from those countries. While our Cambridge program has smaller classes, the integration of our Cambridge students into the larger Somerset College community is very important to us. As a result, Cambridge students will attend tutor group meetings, uh, assemblies, school camps, chapel sessions, as, and more as part of the larger IEB grades 11 and grade 12. This means that our Cambridge students also have the benefit of all the resources and amazing opportunities which are available here at Somerset College. Our Somerset College Cambridge program um, also allows students to finish their A-level qualification at the same time that they would have finished their grade 12. This is unlike many schools in South Africa which allow you to do an AS qualification but then you need to have year 13 to complete your A-level qualification. This is something that really sets Somerset College apart from many other schools in South Africa that offer this program. The Cambridge program does have entrance requirements and there are also subject, that subject requirements which students need to take into account when they are applying for grade 10. So um, students in the younger grades should bear this in mind and look at the Cambridge program and look at the subject um, requirements when they are making their choices in the lower grades. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed looking through that window into our senior school and getting a good idea of the educational experience at Somerset College. Please remember, if you have any specific questions that you need answered, type them in and we'll discuss them at the end of the session with our question and answer. This is your opportunity to interact with us this afternoon. Please use it. You've heard about our extensive academic offering. Now we've lined up some staff members to give you a fuller picture of our extracurricular program, sport, arts and culture, as well as our exciting outdoor adventure program. Firstly, I'm going to introduce you to Alvain Brink. He's our third deputy head in charge of sport, discipline, and outdoor education. Then you'll meet Karina Forslu, head of our art department, and then Liana Dreyer will tell you more about our drama and music programs. Enjoy. Thank you, Patricia. Dear parents and students, my name is Alvin Brink, and I am the deputy in charge of sport, outdoor education, and discipline. I definitely have the best job at the school. Out there on the fields, courts, and the water is where real life learning takes place. Earlier this year, I had the privilege of welcoming our new grade eights at Somerset College. Now, three terms later, it's great to see them embracing the culture of Somerset College. But far more than that, they are contributing themselves and busy building a new legacy. From the opening of Somerset College, we have recognized the importance of an holistic education, as alluded to by Mr. Sayer. After 25 years, we are still convinced um, that this is the right approach. Many of our competitive schools, they focus on either sport or academics, and almost none of them offer the world-class outdoor education program that we have here at Somerset College. As a small school, Somerset College works hard to cater for everyone, from those just wanting to explore, being active, or develop their talents, 
to those wanting to compete and achieve at the highest level. Our aim is to be better today, uh, sorry, is to be better tomorrow than what we are today. That doesn't matter if it's in sport, music, art, drama, or the academics. The importance of physical ed sorry, the importance of a physical activity and participation was highlighted during the COVID pandemic. The interactions with friends, peers, and opponents, receiving affirmation, dealing with disappointment, conflict, and success. All these thousands of small interactions shaped us and help us grow and mature. With regards to sport, we want to instill a lifelong enthusiasm for an active lifestyle, and we do have a compulsory sports program for grade eight, nine, and 10. Despite our small numbers, Somerset College is very competitive in our respective sport leagues. In many of our sporting codes, we compete with the best in the country. We also pride our ourselves in coaching li um, sound life lessons alongside the technical aspects of the respective sports. With specialist coaching and excellent training facility, we have certainly made our mark in sports in South Africa. Our under-16 hockey team just ended fifth in, at the top schools hockey tournament, going into the tournament ranked 13th in the country. Our first team um, girls entered five top hockey tournaments this year. They played in, th in three finals and they won two tournaments. Please go and read our newsletter that are available um, to see the amazing achievements of our other sports like rugby, cricket, rowing, tennis, water polo and netball. Top coaches are not only coaching top teams, but from a young age, our players are coached the correct technique and even more important, sportsmanship. Together with world-class facilities, students have a strong foundation to reach their full potential. And we're looking forward to welcoming you at Somerset College. Thank you. We've had a look at some interesting and varied classrooms on our tour today, but at Somerset College, we believe some of the most important lessons in life are learned outside of the classroom. <laughs> lessons like accountability, responsibility, self-discipline, teamwork and perseverance. These are often best developed in the extramural environment and to that end, Somerset College hosts a wide variety of musical and dramatic arts events and offers an outdoor adventure program that is exciting and indeed life-changing. When you drive through the entrance to Somerset College, some of the first things you'll see are our extensive sports facilities. So let's take a closer look at what's on offer in terms of sport at Somerset College. Our indoor cricket centre has four bowling lanes so our cricketers can train summer and winter. The building also houses our rowing gym, where students alternate training on ergo rowing machines with skimming over the waters at the Aikenhof Dam at Elgin. Hockey is a major sport at Somerset College, both indoors in our extensive hall in the summer and on our grass fields and astroturf in the winter. Our swimming pool can be heated extending the training season for swimming and water polo, which is also a very popular sport for both girls and boys. Our squash courts are open to students from grade six upwards, and our tennis courts double up as netball courts in the winter. The last remaining vineyard at the school provides a beautiful route for our cross-country athletes, while aspiring golfers are able to play at Dissolza Golf Course on a weekly basis throughout the year. And our cricketers and rugby players play on fields that must have some of the best views in the country. Somerset College is a relatively small school compared with many of our sports competitor schools in the area. But our first class facilities and the expertise of experienced specialist coaches has enabled us to punch above our weight. And we're proud to have produced 47 national sports men and women across the sports codes as well as some Olympians and Youth Olympians. 
We'd love to invite you to join our team. For more information, email me at admissions at somcold.co.za. The Visual Art and Design Department is a safe place where students are encouraged to be innovative and current in their creative expression. In Visual Arts, we cover drawing, painting, printmaking, mixed media, multimedia, and some three-dimensional work. The intention is to instill an understanding of skilled art practice while allowing for the development of individual creative outlet. In design, the students are introduced to product, surface, spatial design, and visual communication. They explore fashion design, visual merchandising, and have the opportunity to learn from other brands in order to build their own. In the theory, both visual art and design has a strong visual literacy component, where students engage and with, his with historical and contemporary art making practices and develop critical analytical skills. In grade eight and nine, the students are introduced to the basics of art making through various observational and creative projects with the intention to create a solid foundation for further development in their skills when they make their subject choice in grade 10. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Liana Dreyer. I'm the resident, one of the resident drama teachers and I will speaking for music uh, for Mr. Basson. Now, Somerset College, he says, is privileged to have one of the largest music departments in the Helderberg area, and we encourage participation in music within a department that promotes excellence and is open to all genres of music. We provide students the opportunity to take music either as a subject or as an extracurricular activity, and you've heard about POPs, I believe. In grade 8 and 9, music is offered as part of the creative arts section. Three components, um, music literacy, music listening and music performing and creating make up this course. The ensemble program, which forms part of the music performing and creating program, enables every student, whether they can play an instrument or not, to perform and explore music in a safe, relaxed and enthused environment. In grades 10, 11 and 12, students can take music as one of their electives. The course consists of practical work as well as music theory, improvisation and composition and of course music history. At Somerset College, students have the opportunity to be taught by established musicians Instrumental lessons are offered in 24 different orchestral and other instruments, two jazz bands, a choir, string ensemble, marimba, ba marimba band, excuse me, and drumline supports the music program. Students are also provided with ample opportunity to perform not only at school, but also outside of school at concerts, competitions, exams, and nice state bits. And for more information, please contact the Director of Music, Dr. Basson. And then I have the privilege to introduce dramatic arts, my passion. The one subject that I feel extremely privileged to teach at this school. Right. The most valuable skill, as you can see, I've taken the word creativity and I've qu equated it with dramatic arts. Um, and that is certainly, I'm in such an agreement with Karina in that context that we should be um, 
really forcefully finding our way into a more creative world, a more creative future for our students as creative thinkers and feelers. Um, so I've unpacked the word creativity for you in relation to dramatic arts. So the most valuable, that's certainly the most valuable skill I believe I can teach students. In his book, The Rise of the Creative Class, there is actually something like the creative class. Professor Richard Florida states that in this class, this class are made up of people who do creative work for a living. This includes scientists, engineers, artists, musicians, designers, and knowledge-based professionals. I did not know that such a class or such an idea even existed. This class accounts for, he states, for half of all the wages and salary income of the U.S., over $107 trillion. So that made me think. Um, and it's probably also the reason for my next slide. Um, I think there are two forms of rich that we can discuss here. And I do believe that dramatic arts enriches people's lives and it enriches our students' lives. We teach them to learn from their mistakes, to put other people first, to learn from each other and to be positive. And when they leave us, they have a depth and breadth of knowledge. They have complex reasoning styles, and they consider multiple causes for other people's behavior, which I think is very, very important. Now we come to the very mundane, which is the next slide, um, part of our, of our talk here today. Um, as I said in my opening statement, um, dramatic arts is equated with creativity, but how do we make it an academic creative endeavor? It is split down the middle into a practical and a theoretical component. And for every theater style we teach, there is a related play to analyze and a social political context to unpack. And then students are afforded the opportunity to perform these characters from these plays in these styles and walk in these people's shoes. As it were, um, they would be alive and walking in shoes of people in a completely different era. And that is such an amazing, amazing privilege for our students that we can provide for them. Then at the heart of, I think, what we do here at Somerset College for the Arts is the word art. I think it is the heartbeat of every nation around the world. When we discuss the performance aspects, aspects sorry, of our plays, we have to discover the design elements of our students, uh, of the plays. And our students need to understand the difference, for instance, between a surreal approach um, to a, an expressionist approach or the difference to set and stage designs. And then learn to grapple with the pros and cons of these designs as our um, actors have to then deal with a very difficult stage design. And if you can see design, excuse me, and if you can see on the one slide there um, with um, at the um, Lake Constance, it may be very difficult uh, for a actor to perform a Jacobian play or an Ibsen play on that kind of stage. And we need to grapple with those ideas um, in relation to design. So it is a very holistic subject and one, as you can imagine, I really love. On the next slide, you can see our philosophical approach um, regarding education, regarding the curriculum. It's a constructivist uh, approach where we put the child in the center of learning. Our students devise, they direct, they write, they design, they perform. And I do believe that our students thrive. We, um, I think as drama teachers, we want to enrich ourselves all the time so that we can enrich their lives. And I think our next slide shows um, that imagination within the context of, of imagination and the field of living and dreaming, we kind of try to open up new avenues for our students. Uh, we, hone the, uh, we hone the imaginations or we try to if I find roots into opening it up for them. And we strive to enhance and stimulate the, the students' ability to use their imaginations. And I think the most important thing 
with regards to the imagination and the use, use of the imagination is to be able to look at life from different perspectives. And that is certainly a very useful skill we can teach our students. And then in the next slide, um, the word voice. Um, John Carney was taught by Athel Fugard. He said to him, in the days of apartheid, he said to him, I am going to teach you to fight with words. And this is something that we, I carry around in my core because art is, ha, is so extremely powerful um, that we can use it as a weapon. And then the next slide, just for a bit of um, uh, comedy, I think, for a bit of comedic relief, I look at the word inspiration. And I would like us to just um, watch a little video together. Um, and you can all take a deep breath as long as this video runs. kind of an idea of the sense of humor that we try to infuse our classes with as well. And of course, we'd use um, that specific video when we teach existentialism and in the style of absurd theater. My final two letters of the word creativity, the one is centered around tenacity. And the final one, um, and I, I would like to jump to the final one because I think it's time for me to close. Um, is the word yes. And we base all our practices in drama and in the arts on the yes and philosophy because it does not stem. The word yes does not stem creativity. <coughs> Keith Johnson writes, and in closing, Keith Johnson writes, theatre sports can alleviate. So we play a lot of theatre sports and we do a lot of improvisation. And he is one of my gurus, it feels like. Um, he writes, um, theater can alleviate the universal fear of being stared at, turn dull people into brilliant people, improve interpersonal skills, encourage a lifelong study of human interaction, improve functioning in all areas, as it says on the snake oil bottles. Develop storytelling skills, these are more important than most people realize, and familiarize the student with the bones of theater as well as the surface. Thank you very much. As alluded to earlier in our presentation, Somerset College really prides ourselves at our world-class outdoor education program. Aspects like leadership and self-discovery, to stretch yourself both physically and mentally, to work in a team, to cope with setbacks, to take turns in leading, to solve problems, to appreciate nature and the beauty of the Western Cape, and to take responsibility for yourself and your friends can best be taught outside of the classroom. At Somerset College, we have a tailored outdoor education program, starting in grade eight and running till grade 11, where we take each age group to a different part of the Western Cape and run an age appropriate program. I returned this morning from the Great Ten Camp. We had a wonderful week spending, um, uh, where we spent exploring the different sites in the central Cedarburg. We experienced the beauty and the cold of the snow on Sunday and the swimming in the cold water streams on Thursday. Hiking, cooking, navigating and doing some community service. Our flagship event is definitely our annual trek in Grade 9. 
Somerset College can pride ourselves as the leader in this field. And over the last 23 years, we have shared this concept with many schools as we truly believe that this is a life-changing experience. It is truly a journey of self-discovery. Students cover a distance of 360 kilometers over 27 days. That is if they don't get lost in a safe way. Many people will ask, how is this even possible? How, I can't even get my 14, 15-year-old son or daughter out of bed into the breakfast table in the morning. Well, this journey is designed so that every student can complete it. Together with the help of experts and our learner support unit, we provide all the necessary support to ensure that students flourish and indeed complete this and all our other camps. Thank you. Trek is a real life changer, and I think it is one of the most significant and memorable events in our students' lives. Please keep your questions coming. This is your chance to interact with us and to get the detail on those things that are most important to you when it comes to choosing a high school for your child. Now, a whole new dimension is added to your child's high school experience when they board at Somerset College. We're going to invite you into both our girls' and boys' boarding houses for a quick virtual tour. And then Hilton Toro, head of boys' boarding, will tell you about life in Founders House and Vineyard House. So join me and let's find out about boarding. College offers boarding for grade 8 to 12 students on a weekly and a termly basis and for about 20% of our students Somerset College is not only their school but also their home. Welcome to Founders House, our girls boarding house where we can accommodate 69 girls who are cared for by the head of girls boarding and four boarding house assistants who are all live in the boarding house strategically placed. Our nursing sister has her daily clinic here and she takes care of all the boarders' medical needs. Let's come into the common room. As you can see, this is home from home. In the afternoons after a busy day at school and clubs and sports, the girls come and relax and enjoy. It's very sociable here in the afternoons. I can tell you in the winter it smells of hot chocolate and two-minute noodles. And the girls chat, they play table tennis, they listen to music, they watch movies because in the evenings they're going to work hard. They have a, a well-appointed kitchen and on a Friday evening we take the termly boarders down to the shops. They can top up with stationery and toiletries and any special food that they want. Keep it in the fridge. Come and see our grade 8 and 9 rooms. All accommodation is shared with two girls per room. Each term, the girls change rooms and roommates, which provides the opportunity to get to know one another well and to learn some very important life lessons about living with people. Our grade 10 rooms are larger, and the good news is the cupboard space doubles in size. The grade 11 and 12 rooms are at the back of the house, where it is quieter and conducive for academic focus. While the afternoons are for fun and socialising, at least two hours in the evening are spent doing prep, finishing homework and studying. Let's have a quick look at Vineyard House, the boys' boarding house, where 65 boys have a lot of fun sharing their lives. There's always someone to kick a ball with. The yellow chairs in both boarding houses are of great significance and are a part of a tradition of sharing memories and a strong sense of belonging. Here is our laundry, which is busy all week with the washing from both boarding houses. And here is the boys' common room. There's lots of stuff to do here. <laughs> Let's have a quick look at the rooms. Grade 8 and 9 boys 
have shared cubicle accommodation. Grade 10 boys' rooms look like this. Grade 11s enjoy the view from the front of the house. Grade 12s have peace and quiet to study at the back. Boys and girls eat together in the dining room at the back of the hall. This is a friendly, homely space and your child will be well fed with teenage friendly and healthy food. Apart from three meals a day and three snacks in between, there's also always fruit available, fruit juice and water. And the really good news is there's always second helpings. If you are considering having your child board at Somerset College, it is essential that you come and see our facilities and meet our staff please email me to arrange a personal tour. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Hilton Toro and I'm here as the head of Boys Boarding House. In a hub sense, Cindy van der Berg is the head of Founders House. In our full capacity, we have up to 120 boys and girls. They are supported by five BHAs who we call the Boarding House Assistants. Our environment is very diverse and encourages every learner and staff to live our ethos, which is, when we live, we truly live. We create a home and away from environment where we give an experience that fosters aspiration through character development, pride, and a love for life. The journey starts when you step in and pass that yellow chair in either of the boarding house, in either of the boarding houses, until the last day in your matric year when you sit and get to hear what the rest of the house, the learners and the staff think about the legacy you have left in the house. When it comes to culture, as part of boarding culture, positive behavior is encouraged through building a culture of mutual respect, camaraderie and understanding. Outside time every day for the boys at five o'clock, healthy in-house competitions, dancing competitions in Founders House, 30 seconds and some other activities we do. Added to that, the five boarding house assistants per house act as a supportive role, in-house mentors to the boarders as well with our student development unit. Every year we do our in-weekend, um, we, we do an in-weekend in order to build a strong foundation for, uh, for cohesiveness. The first weekend of the academic year is compulsory, stay in weekend for all students, boarders and staff. This weekend's activities are all geared towards fostering relationships between all new boarders, grade 12 students, and staff from both boarding houses. This weekend helps kickstart what boarding has at its core, the self-discovery, the development, and the character of everyone to, of, of the students. Your room. It is quite special for us in the boarding house. Your room is a space that you welcome. You are welcome to make your own. For the boys, from grade 9 to grade 12, you will stay in a room with a fellow boarder. The beginning of your boarding journey in grade eight will be nurtured through a supportive dormitory environment. The girls are in a two, sorry, they are in twos in a room from grade eight to grade 12. We place importance on your room being both organized and personalized as it can make a dramatic difference to the way you think and feel. We strive to ensure that your room is a positive space and influence in your boarding story. Meals, as you heard earlier on, you are more than welcome to have a second savings. All meals are provided in the dining hall. Our catering manager had, and, and their caterers. Regular contact and feedback between the heads of boarding, heads and deputy head students of both houses and the kitchen manager ensures that good standards are maintained and that the necessary changes are introduced quickly and smoothly. We also pride ourselves with academics. We ensure that learners have study time and provide an environment conducive for this as an area for the boarding staff uh, to, and, and they actively protect this space. There are daily set up prep times, study and homework sessions for boarders, which are supervised, supervised by our staff members. Your sport as well and your free time means a lot to us in boarding. Being active plays a vital role in one's mental wellness and is something which helps our students deal with the pressures associated with their high school and being a teenager. There is a range and choice of stimulating activities for boarders outside teaching time. 
Borders have provided excellent access to school sports and a choice of safe recre recreational areas and hobby facilities outside class time. These are appropriately supervised. Your health. We have a sister on campus who is responsible for the care for all the boarders who are unwell and they administer medication on a daily basis. Oh, well, I've been telling you what we, want, what we can do, but now we do not tolerate initiation or any form of bullying. Both bullying and initiation run counter to the values, um, sorry, both bullying and initiation initiation run counter to the values and ethos of Somerset College and are expressly forbidden in the Somerset College disciplinary code. Substance abuse. All college policies on substance abuse are applied and followed in boarding. Where we suspect the use of drugs or any, any prohibited substance, we facilitate the necessary testing for prohib pro prohibited substances. Students should be aware that the use of prohibited substances may lead to their removal from either uh, or both the boarding house and the school. Discipline is key in boarding, and it plays a vital role in creating an environment which allows to thrive and live the best high school story, um, as it is important in preparing them for an adult life. Discipline should be seen as a stepping stone to true freedom. Accordingly, it is centered around four core aspects of being consistent, fair, honest, and well communicated. This ensures that life lessons are learned in that process. Well, when it comes to concerns, parents and students are welcome and encouraged to raise any complaint or concerns with the heads of boarding. Where concerns are raised or complaints are made, we commit to respond swiftly, uh, escalating concerns to the appropriate school management where necessary. Our hope as the, board, as the boarding house um, parents, when our boarders ultimately leave the house and the college, we want everyone to have a unique personal story that is rich with diverse interactions, balanced viewpoints, and a deep understanding of their own value. We hope that this story and sense of community will guide our borders in their future lives and provide a foundation to become valued and contributing members of the society. Thank you. I hope that all the talks and videos have given you a good picture of what we stand for at Somerset College and the value of each individual student here. Thank you to those who've sent in questions. It's time now for our session where we'll answer those questions. And I'm going to introduce you to our panel once more. They are Graham Sayer, the executive head of Somerset College, and our three deputy heads, Claire Searle, Gareth Tucker, and Alvain Brink, all familiar faces to you now. We're going to tackle the first question, and this one would be for um, Mr. Brink, Alvain Brink. Do you offer soccer as a sport? Thank you, Patricia. Due to the small number of, of students we have, and there's no real um, organized soccer league in the Western Cape, soccer is currently not one of our first choice sports. We have our ever started this year with our soccer teams, and we've got a both an under-16 and an under-19 team, and they train once a, once a week, and they've played a number of friendly games. I might uh, say that they've even won a few of those, so we, we're looking forward to see where our soccer teams will take us. Thank you. And then a question for Claire Searle, um, and that obviously comes from your talk about esteem. Is there a specific focus on entrepreneurial development? Thank you, Patricia. Um, yes, there is a specific focus on entrepreneurial development, a very strong focus. Um, grade 8 is our year of entrepreneurship, where in their esteem lessons and in their EMS lessons, students focus on growing their business skills, um, such as skills of making a business plan, um, learning about pricing, also learning about marketing, um, types of ownership, companies, and so forth. Uh, with leadership development, where they look at inter and intrapersonal skills um, and growing as a leader, and uh, very importantly, thinking about the entrepreneurial spirit, so seeing opportunities where others might see constraints or challenges um, and leading in that way. Um, 
the grade eight year finishes with a focus on corporate social responsibility and on ideas that change the lives of others. Uh, and uh, that's really important to us when we think about our school values, not just to learn for our own needs and perhaps to have a business one day and create a business and create our own employment, but to think about ideas that change the lives of others. Um, in the senior grades, uh, whatever we are doing in esteem, it might be biomimicry, um, or perhaps we look at the UN, UN development goals. Students will choose a goal um, that they want to work on from the United Nations development goals, and they will think of a product or a solution. Uh, they will then be encouraged to think about what kind of business they could um, structure around that. So entrepreneurship is very important to us and it's something we do a lot of. Thank you, Claire. Another sports question. So Alvain, this is yours. How strong is your water polo at the school? Yeah, water polo is probably the one sport that got affected the most, first by the drought and then by COVID. But we're very pleased that uh, our girls play in the top league in the Western Cape and our boys play in the second league. And uh, yearly, a number of our students get selected to represent either Borland or the Western Cape teams. So I'm quite proud of what our water polo teams have achieved so far. Thank you. And then to call on the director of our Cambridge program, Gareth Tucker. A question here was, can you attend a South African university if you have the A-levels qualification? Thank you, Patricia. Yes, you can. Um, the A-level qualification actually consists of two years, namely the AS and the A2, which make up, the, those two years make up the A-level. The AS in South Africa is regarded as the, being the equivalent to grade 12, which means a student can enter a South African university with the AS qualification, and then having completed the A-level qualification, which is the second year, that would take them on to international study, but South African universities also then obviously accept the A-level qualification and in fact some universities give extra credit or extra points for students who have completed their full A-levels in various subjects. Thank you for that comprehensive answer. And then I think this one's for you, Graham. What sets you apart over other schools in the area? Well, that's a bit of a trick question, isn't it? Because we don't want to be seen to be disparaging um, our peers in the, in the area who, or, you know, we, we would like to take an approach to education which is about furthering the nation's best interests. And so um, that's number one for us. Um, but I think I could venture a couple of things. I think you might struggle to find a boarding establishment in this area which is as diverse as ours um, for girls and boys. Um, I think you would struggle to find an educational offering which has the mix of Cambridge and IEB as well established as ours is, uh, particularly in terms of our track record of achievement. Um, you'd probably struggle to find one with an innovation curriculum that's as established as ours is. And you will definitely struggle to find one which has an outdoor program that is as extensive well established as ours is. I think our trek is probably, it was the first um, of its kind, 27 day journey uh, in the outdoors in the nation. It was something which our founding had picked up at a conference in Australia and brought over here. And we've subsequently helped to seed some of those programs across the country. Um, and there are a number of other things I think that set us apart. But really I think this is um, the homework that the parents need to do. I'm not going to do all your homework for you. You should have your spreadsheets out and be comparing us in columns against each other. Um, but I hope I've given you some uh, starting points there. Thank you. Spoken like a real teacher. Um, and this question, I think again for you, Claire. Um, are grade 10 students able to choose art and sciences for their final matric exams? Thank you, Patricia. Uh, yes, they are able to choose art and sciences. Um, so. I'm assuming that is science and life science, which is biology. Uh, so in fact, we don't have any limitation on subject choice. Uh, it's actually in grade nine going to grade 10, except students cannot choose art and design. Uh, but other than that, there's no limitation and students can actually choose any subjects. I think that's actually something that sets us apart as well. Um, students do not have to choose from a block of subjects. Therefore, if they, they can only choose one from that block and one from another block and so forth. A lot of schools do work like that because it makes the timetable a lot simpler. So it makes the organization simpler. But for us, we actually allow students to choose any subjects, any combination. Um, 
except for art and design. Thank you, Claire. Um, and then I think that question is taken a little bit further in the next question, and I just want to explain that the questions are on a screen to the side, so if we're all looking this way, uh, that's what we're looking at. So if, if a student had a combination of art with science, uh, would this qualify towards Cambridge levels? Uh, Gareth, let's hear from you. Right, so in the Cambridge program, you can do art. Uh, there's one art subject, uh, just namely called art and design. There are a number of science subjects, uh, physics and chemistry, for example, is split into two subjects in, in, in IB and the CAPS the system. The physical science includes both physics and chemistry. So in Cambridge, it splits into two separate subjects, and then obviously there's biology. So the idea of qualifying towards Cambridge um, A-levels in Cambridge, you get, you get an A-level in a subject, so you can certainly get A-levels in physics and chemistry and art, if, if you so want to do. Um, students generally tend to go for three A-levels at the end of the two-year program, um, and some, some students do four. So it's down to the number of subjects you're doing, and, and certainly you can do science subjects with art, yes. <coughs> Thank you. Back onto the sports field, not so much this, this field, but into some water. If a student has never done rowing before, do they have the opportunity to participate and will training be provided? And Alvain, you're the one to answer that, please. Yes, uh, I think um, rowing is probably the one sport where students arrive at Somerset College not having experienced it before. It's not a, a sport offered in many primary schools. So we do cater um, for these students. Uh, we've got a rowing camp where we take them out for a few days, um, really starting with the basics. And we do in grade eight encourage students to try a variety of sports. Um, we also, students, since we've got a compulsory sports program, students will arrive here that's never played hockey. And again, the necessary skills and clinics and time is spent to train them the basics so that they can flourish um, and continue with that sport going forward. Thank you. And then staying with you, another sports question. What schools do we play in sports like cricket and hockey? So all our sports we enter into the local leagues. Um, cricket will play in the Borland League. We'll play all the big um, uh, schools in, in Paul Boys, um, Borland Lantbo. Um, and we even try and organize some fixtures against the big Western Cape schools like uh, uh, Bishops and Aronobosch. Um, and uh, then we'll play in our normal league schools, um, even our local neighbors, Paul Filet, Strand, um, and the like. So we try and get quite a variety of teams to play against um, so that we can, we can really test ourselves at all levels. The same applies to our hockey. Um, we take on all the big schools um, in the area um, as well as uh, um, the local schools to play. And uh, I can say that our teams are really, really doing well. Um, and uh, I think a few of the bigger schools are dreading coming to face our cricket team here on our lovely Tabor Oval, which is just uh, down from where we're sitting today. Thank you. And um, now a, a question based on academics and particularly for admission into grade eight. And I'm going to ask Graham if you'll answer that. Um, is admissions into grade eight based solely on the results of the placement test the student writes? Every student coming into Somerset College from grade eight upwards first writes our placement tests in mathematics and English. And the question is, that is that admission into grade eight based only on those test results? Thanks, Patricia. It's a good question. Um, no, not at all. So it's one element of what we consider in all of the apl application documents that come in. Um, in, in, in um, offering people places at a school, deciding whether to offer them places, it's a balance between what they can offer as individuals and what their needs are. So we need to be assured that we have the capacity at the time that they apply to meet those needs, otherwise we're taking their money unfairly. Um, and obviously we need to assess whether they can make a contribution to the school. And we've said that we want alumni who represent a range of ways of being and seeing the world. And I think if we just looked narrowly at academics, that would be flying in the face of that objective. So that is not all that we look at by any stretch. Thank you. And then I'm going to make this one our last question. And it again concerns sports. So Alvain, this is for you. Do we offer all field events in athletics, like long jump and high jump? 
Thanks, Patricia. No, if, if, when we started, we sat down and we decided where we're going to um, focus our resources and our energy. And uh, athletics is one of the sports that we decided, we decided we're not going to um, offer at Somerset College. Um, but that does not mean we don't support students who would like to pursue this. There's a lot of opportunities around us. We've got Marty's um, athletics just down the road. Um, and a number of our students are actively participating in athletics. Uh, we enter them into um, the Borland League. And uh, we, this, this year alone, we had two of our students that made uh, both the Borland and then the Western Cape teams. One for a high jump, and the other one was for a long distance running. Um, so even if we don't offer the sport at, on the campus, students are still encouraged. And uh, I can maybe mention that we do the same for horse riding. A number of our students participate in, in horse riding, and uh, we help and support and provide a framework in which they can achieve. Thank you, and that brings um, the, your participants' questions to an end. But I hope that all of you are actually asking in your heads the most important question, and that is, what do I do now to enrol my child at Somerset College? Well, the first thing to do would be to go to our website, www.somersetcollege.org, and on the home page to go to admissions. You'll find our online application form there, and you'll also find a, a platform to book a tour online. So if you've been inspired by what you've seen today and you want to come and see it um, for real, for yourself, please book a tour online um, on our website. As I said just now during the question time, all students entering the senior school are required to write our placement tests in English and mathematics. And then uh, Mr. Graham Sayer likes to meet either in person or virtually with the student and the parents before an offer of place is made. And if you're applying for boarding, then that meeting will include the head of the relevant boarding house as well. We want to get to know you and we would like you to feel at home with us. So those meetings are important. I would urge you to apply as soon as possible. Many of our grades have waiting lists. And the only way to enter the school is to be on the waiting list. And now we've come to the end of our program. I hope you've really enjoyed what you've seen and heard. Thank you for being with us this afternoon, for the time you put aside for this, and for your input with the questions. You're always welcome to email me at admissions at for more information or to book a tour online. Please check out our website, keep track of us on our social media platforms because there's always something happening at Somerset College. We look forward to hearing from you and hopefully having the opportunity to meet you at some stage. And in the meantime, goodbye and go well. <laughs>